Let's take a quick dive look at the Ilon 700 from the Echelon by Adesto product catalog. The Ilon 700 is a multi-channel IP852 router supporting from 1 to 8 long talk channels. Up to 4 DIN form factor U60 FT10 or TP1250 devices may be directly connected. A total of 8 channels can be supported with the addition of a powered USB hub. Power line support is provided by the U70 three-phase power line adapter, which also provides power for the Ilon 700. The Ilon 700 is not a mains powered device. The user selects a low voltage DC or AC source. DC power in the range of 10.5 to 30 volts is supported. Use a 25 watt 12 volt supply for best power efficiency. AC power in the range of 12 to 30 volts AC is supported provided the secondary is not connected to earth. A 40VA 24 volt transformer is a good choice. If code stipulates that the secondary must be grounded, a one-to-one -one transformer may be necessary. With power sorted out and the Ilon 700 connected to your LAN through the ETH0 port, let's get to work. The label on the back of the Ilon 700 provides key information for access and security as configured from the Adesto factory. By default, the Ilon 700 uses DHCP with MDNS for IP access. MDNS, or multicast DNS, supports named access without a DNS server in the network. In such a network, the Ilon 700 is accessed using the host name .local. In a network with a local DNS server, just the host name should be enough to access the Ilon's IP address. In order for MDNS to work, you must have an MDNS client running on your PC. In Windows, this is not a default service. It's often installed with other software packages, iTunes a good example. Determine if you have MDNS installed by going to the Services Manager and looking for Bonjour in the list of services to see if it is active. If it is not there, go to Google, find it, and install it on your PC. In a web browser, let's take a look at the Ilon 700 configuration pages. We're going to use the Apollo user credential marked on the back label. In the Network tab, we can set how the IP address is managed, either by DHCP or by static assignment. From this tab, we also have control of the host name if we want to change it. In order for these changes to apply, we have to first click Update and then finally reboot the system for the IP changes to apply. The System tab provides key summary information. From here, the current configuration, as discovered by the Ilon 700, is visible. This particular example has a pair of U60FT10 adapters attached. The device MAC IDs are displayed, and also there are action buttons that allow for the generation of service pins for use during device provisioning. There are also buttons that are used to reset the password, reboot the smart server, return the device to factory configuration defaults, and also for upgrading the system image. The Features tab is where you select the features and interfaces to enable. The self-install routers as repeaters is a special use function that applies only in special cases. Typically, this is not selected. The single LAN interface applies only if a single channel is attached to the Ilon 700. This simplifies swapping adapters because each time the Ilon is powered, USB is re-enumerated. Each time it comes up as LAN 0. We'll talk about this more later. The Layer 2 LAN scanner, Layer 5 RNI, as well as IP70 interfaces are also enabled from here. In the Authentication tab, you can lock down access to the RNI by setting the 128-bit MD5 authentication. You have the option to use a raw hex value or a hashed value based on a passphrase. Now for the integration. The goal is to build a network on a high bandwidth IP852 channel backbone that connects our field devices on FT10 segments attached to the Ilon 700. The backbone includes the network interface for the IZOT-CT commissioning tool. It also connects Ilon 700s that have U60 adapters attached. We replicate this configuration as the scope of the network dictates. By supporting 1 to 8 channels, the Ilon 700 provides value and flexibility to fit almost any network topology. Now for the mechanics, we start by launching the IP852 configuration server. We define the VNI interface that is used by IZOT-CT as a member of this channel. This is followed by using the LOMWORKS interfaces applet to define the VNI. 
we can use the test feature to confirm the settings and connectivity to the configuration server. Next, we add the ILN 700 devices that are part of our IP 852 channel. Remember, the configuration server has to be running whenever any routing changes occur. Once all the channel members in the configuration server have turned green, we are ready to start installing these devices in the IZOT commissioning tool. Now we launch the IZOT commissioning tool. We are going to select the network interface that we just defined in the IP852 configuration server. This will be the tool's network interface. We will start by identifying and defining the channel that forms the backbone as an IP852 channel. Next, a pair of FT10 channels are dropped on our design. These represent the channels that are connected to the U60 adapters on our Ilon 700. Finally, an IP70 channel that exists within the Ilon 700 and is used to route packet traffic between the adapters is added to our design. With the channels defined, we can add the long talk routers to build out our control network infrastructure. Our project has three routers defined to connect a pair of FT10 segments to an IP852 backbone of this control network. This animation shows the mapping of the MAC IDs to each of the router sides. The values are reported on the System tab of the ILON 700 Configuration Web UI. Commissioning starts with the router elements on the IP852 channel and proceeds outward to the field elements on the FT10 segments. Manual ID entry and service pin commissioning methods are both supported. The ILON 700 System tab is our go-to for either option. Here, we use the action buttons to generate the service pin messages for each of the router elements in our system. A single button on the ILON 700 will also generate the service pin messages for all the router elements. The physical service pin is of limited use in systems that have more than one channel. The order of service pin messages cannot be guaranteed. This video clip captures the expected LED behavior of the ILON 700 as it progresses from uncommissioned to commissioned. Up to four USB channel adapters are supported directly by the ILON 700. Add a powered hub and eight channels can be supported. For the single channel use case, there's a special mode that allows the ILON 700 to re-enumerate the USB channel every time it starts up. That way it comes up as LON 0 every time. In multi-channel configurations, you can establish the order by hot plugging the USB adapters in the order that you select. Once enumerated, the mappings are fixed. By removing a special file, you can start the enumeration all over again if you need to change it. Every once in a while, it is necessary to access the console interface of the ILON 700. This can be done through SSH or serial interface. To do it with a serial interface, you will need a micro USB-B to USB-A cable. The first connection should be monitored using the Windows Device Manager. You have to observe two things. First, under the USB controllers, the Serial Driver Properties Advanced tab, you want to make sure that the VCP or Virtual COM port is enabled. Next, under the COM ports, you want to establish which COM port is assigned to your ILON 700. That way you'll be able to use your terminal application to connect to it. The Serial Console interface is at 15.2 kbald, 8 non and 1 data framing. The ILON 700 console access is protected by the same credential used by the web access. Let's go ahead and log in as Apollo. What we're going to do is find the file that is used to enumerate the USB interfaces. We go to the directory var slash Apollo slash data slash router and we're looking for the file nid underscore index. This is the file that enumerates which devices are indexed for LON0 to N. To establish a new device order, we first delete nid underscore index. 
We remove all of our adapters from the Ilon 700 and remove power from the Ilon 700. Power up the Ilon 700 and allow about a minute for it to settle down. After that, we apply the connections as we want our devices ordered, LON 0 to N. This wraps up our dive into the Ilon 700. I hope you found it informative. For more information, visit adestotech.com, click on the products menu, and select the embedded products for more information.